Intro music. My name is James. My name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. And should we start off with Whoa Death? Oh Death. It was a. Uh, of all the weeks of Padres baseball, that was one of them. That's true. That that was a week. So. <laughs> yeah. This recap might be quick, and that's okay. That's Welcome fine. to the recap episode. We uh we we generally try to look at each game the past set period of time, and usually. We've been lucky this year. It's been very positive. And uh, this, this, this week, not so much. Not a lot of positivity this week. No, not, not really. Um, the positives are as followed. No, you know what? Let's do, let's do oh, this. Let's, 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 let's run through quickly. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're not going to want to linger. <laughs> it's like we're, We'll linger on the parts we want to linger. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't want to take part in the tragedy. We want to be the CSI team that comes in and cleans up and finds out what happened. <laughs> right, we don't want to see the murder again. Let's just run through really quickly because, let's face it, it's the week of June the 10th, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't the worst week of my life. But it was close. <laughs> Oh my goodness, James. Okay, let's just jump into it. All right. So the game one is in on Friday. We were welcomed by the New York Mets into town to face one Jacob Degrom. Ever heard of him? I have. Um, we faced him before, actually. He did like, uh, seven, <laughs> six days before. Yeah, yeah, he, well, we did. And and the thing is, like, it was. <sighs> we were competitive against him. I mean, not. I mean. We, the hitters weren't. Our pitcher was. Right. I think Snell went, did a really good outing. But we lost 3-2 to two next game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just say one nice thing to Jacob Grom is that he's the best pitcher on the planet. And that might be understating it. The dude, the terror. He, he, he might be the best pitcher since Nolan Ryan. The way he's throwing the baseball is just absurd. He just is like, I don't know. We spent the last recap when I talked about him. is like, oh, his strategy is just throw fastballs until it dips below 100 miles an hour. And so he's just like, hey, catch up, guys. And th- literally, we can't. Literally, <laughs> just couldn't do it. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it's it. But again, it's not that it's just that they're fastballs. They're fastballs <laughs> with a 12 inch dip. Yeah, it's just so, so they have incredible movement. And he's also a good. Offensive threat. He had a two run, two run RBI. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, so he pitched. Legitimately, yes. Degrom beat us all on his own. Yeah. He drove in two of the runs <laughs> and shut us out for eight innings. Yeah, Jake it Cronworth was, had a two run homer, which is nice, but not against Degrom. <laughs> not against Degrom. <laughs> no. So it was if if he would have if we would have not given up to hit given up a hit to Degrom and driving in two runs, we would have won that game. Yep. Next game. Next game, Saturday. Um, if things going to get worse, they did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Saturday, June 12th, 2021. The New York Metropolitans welcome to town, the San Diego Padres, and we are beaten on four runs, on five hits, no errors for the New York Mets, one run, six hits, and no errors for the San Diego Padres. Uh, this was a game also that felt... Uh, I think we should caveat a little bit. The week prior to us, we also had a losing record. We did, yes. So it, there's a, there is, a, for lack of a better term, downward momentum. And after this game, I was a like, A trend oh, is fall. Yeah. A trend is evolving. A trend is evolving. <laughs> uh, or in this state, devolving. And uh, If it, you were yeah. to see <laughs> this last couple of weeks on a graph, <laughs> it would look like a dead... Just beep, yeah. right down the middle, like, like an Olympic ski slope. Boom, <laughs> just straight down. It was. It's there was one little uplift for a ramp, but that was it. 
um, Lindor um, sat and like like rightfully so like learned a lot from the last time he saw Musgrove took him deep the first inning but Musgrove turned around with a really good start you know only three on runs on six innings pitch 6.1 innings pitch another quality start our pitchers are the best our, our, our pitching staff is still elite yeah. we still have a, one of the best pitching staffs ever we just need to learn to string together hits yep um, awesome. so we lose four to one next game <laughs> <laughs> The San Diego Padres are welcomed into town to Flushing, New York. The New York Metropolitans lose. What? What? <laughs> what? Oh what? The San Diego Padres beat them on seven runs, nine hits, and one errors. And the Mets had three runs and eight hits on no errors. That's what? true. Slam Diego came to town. Ooh. Has, any, has anyone made um, Santa Claus is coming to town, but Slam Diego's coming to town? I mean, no, come on. Um, work on that, somebody. Yeah. Because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it should be noted that the Padres were on the path to lose this game very bad, not very badly, two to one up until the seventh inning. Yep. Um, but you know, we had we, the inning that the whole team is constructed around happened. Drew out up bats, got walks, and someone came through with a big hit. Two people came through with big hits, actually. Correct. Yeah. The thing is, like the, the strategy isn't to rely on a big hit. It's just to keep the thing rolling, yep. not to get outs. Yep. If Tatis instead of hitting Grand Slam would have walked yep. or just got a single, that would have been more effect- that would have been effective too. Then yep. if um, Machado wouldn't have hit a home run right after that, got a single, that would have driven a run too. The whole idea is just to keep the ball rolling and not right. ball- keep things rolling and not give them free outs. And yep. exactly what happened, what we're supposed to do happened. They walked in a run. Machado, I mean, Tatis came up, Grand Slam. Machado went back to back. It was really great. Um, but it just, it just, it was. It, it, well, the one good thing, it's hard to say because, let's see, the, um, the Padres in this game. Grounded to four double plays. So even that, the one thing that, that, that the positive about that is, yes, we're getting on base. Because if you, you right. can't ground a double plays unless you run into base, have people on base, obviously. <clears throat> that didn't make any sense. I feel like I marbled that. Anyways. Uh, you can't ground double plays unless people are on base. Correct. And if you ground to four of them in the game, for example. Yes. So there were at least four people on base. Right. The problem is the next guy in line just grounds the double play. No, you either work or walk or you hit him over their head. Right, right. Exactly. It, it just, it just, that's the, that's, I think that's one of the biggest trends is that we're not hitting things over the heads. If you listen to our last episode, we determined that quality of contact is not great. No, not at all. Not at all, not at all, not at all. So, uh, that's what happens. You have great quality contact. You ground out a lot in big moments when you're trying to make big hits. And and um, what Paddock? Great start. Great start today. That game, phenomenal start. Probably one of his better starts of the game. Six inning pitch, two yeah. run runs, nine strikeouts. That's awesome. Yeah, just again, elite. He is has lost. I think three or four starts now. He's turned it around. I think he's. I I. I no longer dreading a paddock start. Right. I, I am, But unfortunately, <laughs> you can't talk up a game where we smacked around the Mets so much because the next three games happened. We traveled to the Mile High monstrosity known as Denver, Colorado. And uh, we, on Monday, June 14th, proceeded to lose to said Colorado Rockies, who... As of the time of this episode, sport a nice twenty six and forty one record, James. And for those who don't know what he just said, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, this game, they're twenty six and forty one, and we lost three to two on three run runs and eight hits and no errors for the Rockies, and two runs and five hits and no errors for the San Diego Padres. And this game, we almost got shut out in Coors Field. Yes. And that 
would have been the worst. We did not note something on the game before this one. It was a return of Trent Grisham. Um, this is Trent Grisham now with us, and it was a perceived idea that it would spark our lineup. Um, in the ninth inning of this game, he had a two-run homer. Yeah. Things were looking up. Wasn't good enough. It did, that was it. That was the end of that. The end of that. Uh, yeah. Again, another thing is um, Lamette pitched. Yep. They only let him pitch four innings, I believe. Yep. Four innings pitched, four hits, one run, two walk, three strikeouts. You'll take that in Colorado any day of the week. Yep. The weather came back. Three innings pitched, three hits, one run, on one earned run. One exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that, you'll, you'll allow, if you if you have a game with only giving up three runs, Colorado, you're happy. Exactly. It's huh. just, I wish we had you know a team with professional hitters. Oh, baby. Why would you say that? Why because the next game happened, Joseph. <laughs> the next game happened. <sighs> Tuesday, June 15th, 2021. We come into town to face the Colorado Rockies, and we lose 8-4, to four, James. Um, the Colorado Rockies had 8 runs on 12 hits, no errors, and we had 4 runs and 7 hits on no errors. And this game, uh, this game sucked. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Um, because the first two innings, we had four runs. It felt like, oh, things are turning around. We have, you know, you know, four runs in two innings. Our our ace is on the mound. You know, you know, Tatis had a great two run homer. Right, this guy's on fire. Two more runs in the second. Darvish is getting us. We're up four nothing. Yeah. How can, how can this? be bad for us how how because the Padres can't hit James that's how it can be the bad Padres have all gotten some weird stomach virus that makes your arms weak I don't know how to explain it but I just it it was well no no we did hit for the first time I think it feels like a month we hit in the first two innings and then we just gave up we didn't give up it's just Darvish it's a tough place to pitch Darvish Ends up probably, he's pitching five innings pitch. He was, was led into the six, but probably maybe shouldn't have. I don't know. What do you think about that decision? Because he, he, he gets charged for four earned runs. He comes into the sixth inning at, I think it was 80-something pitches, right? 86, that's right. It was 86 pitches. I, I texted you. I said, hey, he's under 85. Give him the six. And he was at 86 pitches. Um, and obviously, he wasn't having the sharpest of stuff at that point. He wasn't having the sharpest of, stu- sharpest of stuff, but I do think I would have let him go in out there. It is Colorado. You do want to conserve arms. And if Darvish thinks he can do it, he yeah. is a Cy Young contender, you right. know? So you're going to... You're going you're gonna to listen to him and say, oh, yeah, I can do it. And you also want to build your pitcher's confidence. Right. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, this is a tough place to pitch because it was also, we haven't mentioned this, it was over 98 degrees in both these games. Yeah, I believe this game was 102. It was gross. So you already have, you already have people say, like, playing at mile high is awful. And then you have, like, heat exhaustion inside of it. So everyone's sweaty. Everyone's, like, flush in the face. Everyone's, everyone looks like they're not having a good time. And then our bullpen didn't do that great, you know. Uh, Tim Hill came in, allowed two run runs. Pagan, second game in a row where he gave up home runs. It's uh, gave up earned runs rather, and it's you know, and it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to fault the bullpen because they've been carrying us through. It's true. Our pitching staff has been carrying us, and when the offense is not doing anything, their job. Well, then it's not. Well, again, we're gonna get to the the positives in right. a couple days. Not in a couple minutes. <laughs> it just feels like it's that long. And also, it just... For those people that don't... Who are new to baseball that are listening to this, the reason why Colorado is so... It's just a wormhole of despair. Since it's so high in the atmosphere, where people shouldn't live. <laughs> um, Place reserved for mountain goats and prairies. Exactly. <laughs> And it just it's just where all the snow lives. Why do people live where there's snow? It doesn't make any sense. The beach exists. Anyways, so the high atmosphere means 
the ball travels way better. It's like you say, it's playing on the moon. Yeah, it's the highest altitude baseball field in um, baseball. It's also when the when the um, the um, football team plays there. I can't. Right, the Denver Broncos. Yeah, that's that's them. The other guys, they they always they have the longest passes and um, football happen there because it's you can just sky the ball because right. it just travels so well. But the other thing is with the high atmosphere, they've discovered that certain pitches don't break as well, mm-hmm. don't move as well, and one of the pitches that they've discovered doesn't do this that is affected by the atmosphere is a slider. And because the way you hold the ball and the way you spin the ball it doesn't work well in that atmosphere. Emilio Pagan, one of his dominant pitches is a slider. Tim Hill only throws sliders. Austin Adams struggles the next game. He only throws sliders. Pitchers that do well over there are pitchers that can throw a cutter, which is a harder sinker, or people that can pitch. For some reason, the faster you can pitch, the sometimes the worse you can do over there. People that can throw a cutter at 80 miles an hour seem to be the better pitchers. It's, also, it's just weird. I, 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 it's... it's it's a confusing mess because you really should like so Lamette does well there because he his velocity can play well and but he can his and his slider acts because it's just a sharp break it's not looping as much as other people's sliders and yeah the people that do very well there tend to have pitches that have lots of like straight downward uh breaks yes so induced ground ball like gomber when he beat us he had, he had tons of pitches that had crazy downward breaks because he's just like, oh, I don't want you to elevate anything ever in this ballpark, which is the right strategy, right? You don't want absolutely right strategy. You do not want to be a fly ball pitcher in Coors. And exactly, that's, that's and sliders long, don't yeah. have a downward break; they have a, da- a slide sideways yeah, break. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, it's one of those things. Just it's just, and I'm not saying we should ban Colorado as a state and burn the stadium down. I think it's a fun thing to have. I just think. It just added insult to injury. Oh yeah, to be struggling so much offensively, and then all of a sudden you're playing in a kiddie pool, and you can't swim a lap. You know, it, 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 it's like it just it just felt deflating. It felt deflating. It's it like was, being like somehow if you had God mode activated and you still died, yeah, and you still lose the game. <laughs> you have God mode activated. What's wrong with you? You have God mode on in one of the best sluggers in the in. In baseball and several of the other best hitters in baseball. Yeah. And you can't... Tatis had no problem hitting this. Tatis game. had no problem hitting. Neither did Grisham. And honestly, Tommy Pham. Those three guys are just... The problem is that we just... The connect the, Those guys cannot carry team... Cannot carry whole ball playing. Like whole, a whole, whole offenses. They need help from everybody, you know? I don't know. Shall we finish the series recap, James? And probably the fastest series recap of history. Yep. Wednesday, June sixteenth, in the year of our Lord twenty twenty one, the Colorado Rockies welcome us into town. Us, San Diego Padres. This is how bad. And for the loyal listeners, you know Joey likes to make little cute puns. <laughs> yeah, I'm so on cool. half of the, um, <laughs> the teams. I'm exhausted. He's exhausted. <laughs> Just like you, like last 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 time we played the Rockies, they were the the baby boulders or the. Himalaya. Oh, the topological terror. Top, yeah. 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 There, there's no point joking around. No. We're not having fun. Not you shouldn't fun. be having fun listening to us. This it's is just... a chore for every one of us. <laughs> and I'll have fun when we talk about the positive because there are positives. Uh, but yeah, we lose eight to seven on eight runs and 13 hits and one error for the Rockies, seven runs and 11 hits and no errors for the San Diego Padres. And this was a true. Colorado Rocky game. Yeah, it, I think it went back. It was, the, it was the most fun to watch because yes, when Colorado is wind is blowing out and it's just nonsense. Oh yeah. The the, the we had the lead like three times this game and they took it back. Those games are less heartbreaking to win to lose because like well it's just Colorado. What are you gonna do? It, 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 last week I said we would lose a Colorado game. That's why I said I was like we're gonna lose a Colorado game. Yes, but I'll lose a like a. A Colorado nonsense yeah, game. Nonsense game. There's always one. Yeah. Um, Tatis hits the longest home run of his career, 477 feet. Because he was hitting the home run of the moon. <laughs> yeah. Or a league leading home yeah. run count of 21. Um, Trent Grisham had a great appearance. 
Um, we ended with a great two run homer. He had a great day. Um, Tom, like, the offense did good job, good things, right? But Blake Snell, um, as we've as forementioned, is has, has struggled in Colorado before. Um, was charged for seven earned runs and three point one eight pitch was really bad. There's no, uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna sugarcoat that. It's not good. Um, exactly. Um, Kyle Freeland was also not good, so it wasn't like it wasn't like there was just some you know outmatching of each other. You know, it's um, just Snell was. I mean, it's tough saying giving like you should give him a shorter leash because you want your pitcher to go at least four innings. Um, but yeah, it just kind of he just stunk, <laughs> just bad. He was just and so I mean his, <laughs> his slider wasn't sliding. I mean, everything that's wrong with Colorado, everything that yeah. pitchers complain about in Colorado happened to Snell. Yeah. Again, he pitched phenomenal against um, um, DeGrom five days earlier. Yeah. He pitched phenomenal his previous start. Yeah. He's, he's had several good starts in a row. He's just playing in Colorado, and he just had, and then he had offense, but he also just, every problem that people talk about Colorado happened to Snell. And he had that look on his face that pitchers get in Colorado where they think, maybe I could work at a shoe store. Well, I think... It's Why the, am I here? You could tell the Colorado Rockies, like, oh, he has no confidence in any of his breaking stuff, so we're only going to hunt fastballs. Because that's the only place, that's the only one he could place. And they just hunted fastballs, and they did well. I mean, I mean and Kyle Freeland also struggled in the same thing. Like, oh, we realized that all of his breaking pitches aren't breaking as much, and he doesn't have that much deception, and so we did the same thing. You know, so, and you just, you know, I, I think that playing in um, Colorado might be um, one of the most debilitating things as a, as a pitcher. Because Kyle Freeland is a fine pitcher. He's a fine athlete. But he's playing like the, the literal, his literal environment is out to get him, right? It's, his it's, environment's like, oh, you're no good. pitcher yeah. Yeah. will ever be in the Hall of Fame who had a career in Colorado. Tough love, right there. Yeah, sorry, Colorado Rockies. I don't think as far and again, Colorado's only been around since the uh, the nineties. But I also don't think there's a pitcher in the Hall of Fame, or even a pitcher that's up for the Hall of Fame. That spent time in the Rockies organization. There must be. As he's trying to struggle to think of one. Yeah, who, what, what is one pitcher that's gone over there and dominated? I mean, it's a tough thing, right? Because, like, the best pitcher, like, I think in, currently the best, like, pitcher with the most starts is, is currently on the Rockies right now, Herman Marquez. Yes. And he's not... But he's not like DeGrom, like Schilling, Johnson level. Like he's not, or Kershaw, like he's just a good pitcher. Like so at best, the best pitcher in, in, for Colorado in their history is a, a good pitcher. Not a great pitcher. Well, because the thing is... You can't really be a... No pitcher wants to sign with them. No. So they have to rely on homegrown talent, a lot of homegrown talent. And a lot of times if they're trying to trade for a pitcher... No team wants to trade. No, nobody hates somebody in their roster bad enough to trade them for the Rockies. Hey, Austin Gomber. I mean, I mean, Austin Gomber is bad against everyone else except the Padres, but they do play the Padres a lot. So maybe, they, maybe, maybe the Colorado. That's true. Card- they did get Austin Gomber, and he has a lot of potential. He's a really good pitcher. But they did trade the best defensive third time play baseman of all time for him. Yeah, you'd expect. At, at at least something good. They again. They didn't trade a Degrom. Yep. He's not a Degrom. He's not. He's not a instant Hall of Fame type stuff. He's good. He could be that, but he won't be that if he stays in a Rockies uniform. Yeah. Well, James, um, five and one. Sorry, one and five. One five was the record. We uh, you said it'd be five. And, you thought it'd be five and one. I thought it'd be four and two. And so technically, I had the numbers right, but I, I dyslexic devil came I, in. Not, that's not no, 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 that's not how this works. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, James, you. 
So, so let's talk about the positives because yeah, I, I think people have already turned off and or <laughs> yeah, just just anyways. I am still positive about this team. What we can look back on this team, this dris- dismal two weeks is our starting pitching is still keeping us competitive. Yep. Our bullpen is still keeping us competitive. Yep. We just need to turn around the offense. As far as offense goes, Tatis Jr. is on the on another world right now of producing. He is, again, there's a reason why he's first in voting in short stops uh, nationally yeah second of a uh, third of everybody in vote getting the number one right now is Shoho Otani number two is Acuna Jr. and number three is Tatis Jr. I think the only reason why Tatis isn't is because there are really good nationally short stops there are oh, good, yeah. there are good nationally yes exactly so it's just and you're going to get the fans from San Francisco voting for Brandon Crawford and you're going to get people from LA voting for Gavin Lux or or Corey Seager, right? You're just, you're just going to get that. Oh, I get it. I but get it. But you just, it's... It, anyways. Yeah, it's a, still, yeah, yeah. yeah, so anyway, so yeah, we have all of that. Grisham hasn't, came back, hasn't missed a step. Still the best defensive outfielder we have. Still a terror on the, um, at bat. Fam is terror. A machine. A machine right now. He is getting on base. He's stealing bases. He's just doing a phenomenal job. Everybody, and we we uh, we fell victim to it, the fam hate. But we even said back when, like, fam needs to turn it around, but we know he could do it, and he has done it. Yeah. We've, I th- we've eaten the crow sandwich. We've yeah, had we've, we've, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and for those people that still are on fam's back for some reason, you're not watching baseball. Yeah. You're not watching the Padres talk. Yeah. You're not watching any games. Fam is turning around. He's... Our third best hitter in our lineup right now. Yeah. Mill Myers um, is getting at least a hit a game. He's having competitive at bats. Yesterday's game, uh, the last game of the Colorado series, I thought he had put together some really great at bats and just like oh, yeah. really, like really competitive, smart at bats. Whereas I feel like re- up until then, he just has, uh, I think people have speculated that he is nursing an injury more profound than probably his right knee is giving up. But and I think it kind of makes sense because he just isn't, he just missed his timing isn't there and whatever. But I think the past this week, he's really stepped, puts together some really good at bats. And, you know, when he's, when he's on, he's one of the best right fielders in the game. Yeah, exactly. And so that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I think he's starting to turn it around. Machado still needs to turn it around a little bit harder than he is right now. It's just tough because, like, Machado, like, Machado definitely isn't red hot, and he's definitely not even hot. I would say, but he he's still barreling. He's getting quality of contact. He's, he leads like our team in quality of contact. If, if, well, oh, I, I know all that. I'm just saying, as far as people, as far as positive things that we look forward right. to, obviously, years past you give up on the Padres. Don't give up. On, we're still, and the thing that I think the most positive thing, and see if you um, agree with me. Is that everybody is taking ownership? Oh yeah, it's not. He did this. He did that. It's not my fault. It's your fault. Everybody from Tatis Jr. Yeah. to you know Hosmer to the pitching staff are all taking responsibility. They all know they're struggling. They're all doing their best. Jerks and Profar, um, I, I came out and said he's sorry. We're going to do better. Will Myers has come out and said, sorry, all the pitching, all the coaching staff, Chase Tingler have all said, we're sorry. And that means they're all, they all know they're competitive and all they're going to win. What I like about people who take ownership of things, it means they're still a team. Yeah. They're taking ownership as a team. When they, when they start falling to infighting, it's terrible. Yeah. Like if you watch the Baltimore Orioles this year. Oh, yeah. Having one of the worst seasons ever. There, you listen to their press conferences. They're all they're 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 all inward. They're blaming other people. You know, this should happen. This should happen. Maybe the we weren't trained as well. The um, the managers like I don't know why they did that. Well, you trained them. You know, so it's like it, it just you don't fall in fine as a team. They're taking ownership as a team. Yep. Nobody Tatis Junior has every right to be like. <laughs> 
<laughs> I have a lead league in home runs. I'm leading the league in both home runs and stolen bases. Yeah. And I'm hitting almost 300. I'm fine. <laughs> it's the rest of them that suck. <laughs> no, he's not doing that. He's saying, yes, the team is struggling. So I think I like that attitude that they're still thinking as a team and they're also think, still thinking competitively. It's a, they still know they're a competitive team. They still know they're a championship level team mm-hmm. that's just slumping right now. This happens. And we even, and this is the problem about baseball. We even talked about in the beginning of the season, the first episode, like what to expect. We know that we knew every year in baseball this was going to happen. Yep. There's, there's always a slump. There's always something that just sort of, eh. And like the Dodgers had, what were they lost like 10 in a row? Yeah, yeah, or, they, yeah for sure. I mean, the Dodgers had a red hot start. They're, well, they're, they were on pace for 136 wins. And now they're just, you know, they're in the same little like stalemate that the like, Giants, the Padres, and us are. Exactly. So, Padres and Giants and Dodgers are. So, yeah. what I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are 4 and 13 in the last 17 games. That's atrocious. <laughs> yes, our offense is, most of our offense is swinging like little leaguers. Maybe, because yesterday's game did show that there was. Maybe, words. but, yeah, but again, but this will just be one of those things when they do the little highlight reel of the season before the World Series victory. And June was terrible, and they just cut to them like, oh, well, all the bad press, and then all of a sudden, like, and then this, then the spark happened when Cincinnati came to town, you know? So I, I still have... Ultra high hopes. I know this this team is... We're going to be in the playoffs for sure. This is just a little like... Oh, okay. Eh. The Padres need to adjust. They're all, you know for a fact... They're all doing putting extra time in the batting cages... And we're looking at more tape than they ever have... All season to try to get... Their swings back in shape. Getting that quality contact up, dude. Getting the barrels. Yes. So do you disagree barrels. with anything that I just said? I, uh, I have... Um, some worries about some of our players. And if you want to listen to our previous ep- our topics episode, you'll know very well which one of them will be. Which one of them he said some rude things to. Not unjustified, but there um, were some rude things said. I... S- okay, so the positives. I think seeing Grisham, Grisham give, like, Pitcher's hell at bat. Like, I love that. He, I feel like he's the peskiest at bat that we have. So when he's locked in to be pesky, you're just doomed. I, 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 here's the thing about, I don't think he's the peskiest at bat, but he's the peskiest bat with a threat. Yeah, that's true. Because he, because yeah. Jackson Profor, when he wants to, that's true, can have a 14 pitch at bat, but he also doesn't end a 14 pitch at bat with an upper deck shot. Right. Trent Grisham, when he makes contact, is pretty awesome. Pretty <laughs> <It does. laughs> So, and so I guess that's true. And just you know that what ends there, which happened yesterday's game, is just three and two, three and found, found, found pitches off, and he gets a pitch, a ball, ball out of the strike zone, and he just he he's on it, Apo Taco, like just tying game shot, and that was so cool. Like, oh, this is the guy who he is. So I'm I'm very up about Grisham, Fam, Tatis. I think Machado's peripherals, just like how Fam was getting super unlucky, I think Machado's kind of getting unlucky as well. He's just not getting... He's finding gloves probably more than he should. Um, I think Myers, like I said, is, is turning around. There just is a real problem. And I think Cronenworth, too, is getting very unlucky. But um, the value that he adds defensively, Cronenworth, and I think he has the ability to be great offensively. I think it's, I think he will turn around, too. But I think there's no... Um, you know, I, I looked it up today. He's the has the third best on base percentage of all second basemen in National League right now. Cronenworth. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he's mean, not a no. Yeah. He's 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 an asset to our team. I just think that a lineup that has Profar, um, Caratini, and or and or Rubber Rivas and Hosmer. Those guys are just they're just rally killers. This is my. This is this is based on somewhat data, but also just how I watch the game. It's just they're rally killers, and they're they're just they're they can be negative at the plate. Um, I think Caratini is probably the most clutch of all of them. He is. He can uh, recently because I know. I mean, Eric Hosmer. I I ragged on him a lot last episode. 
But he really did have an incredible first two weeks of the season and just kind of cooled down. I think that if we keep throwing out lineups with Eric Hosmer being high, which is today's lineup against the Reds on reopening day, he's number six, which I think is appropriate. I do not think he should be above five currently the way he's hitting. I think the Padres are seeing what we saw with Myers. Myers is putting together really good at-bats. And Myers has the ability to hit balls in the air far, he routinely. Does. Like yesterday, he barely missed a home run. And you can just tell, like, oh, his goal was to hit a home run. Yeah. Not to be himself and hit a ball into the ground. That's not Eric Hosmer's That's not, goal. No, yeah. <laughs> but it feels like it's Eric Hosmer's goal. But so the way I disagree with you is this. If the status quo next two weeks is we're just going to do the same kind of lineup and it continues this path... I I have a hard time imagining he would go far, and because without doing major trades, and I wonder if I just wonder if we even have that appetite anymore. I think we do. I think we. I think that this ownership group wants the World Series yesterday, right? Exactly. But it does mean that we lose big pieces, and I don't know. I, I have my. I think we're gonna make the playoffs definitely as a wild card team. Based upon what I think is, based upon what I know about the the peripheral stat, you know, on our, our the ceiling. Profar said this. It's like you got to believe in us. I'm, this is the one of the most talented. This is the most talented team I've ever been on. Like, there's so much talent on this team. You got to believe in us. Like, and he said, show up tonight and just cheer us on. That's what we need. We need to have, you know, tens of thousands of people cheering for us and going bananas. Even though, like, I've never heard Petco so loud. When there was a third, a third capacity, dude, dude, yeah. I can't even. If Tatis Jr. hits a grand slam tonight, like people are gonna go deaf. It's crazy. And if <laughs> Joe Musgrove has a good starting oh, dude, game, the game's gonna go. It's gonna be nuts. And I think Joe Musgrove, I guarantee, is gonna have a good. So start let me tonight. let me caveat my little up positive. I think pitching's still good. Snell needs to figure it out. Snell goes from elite to just tilted, angry too quickly. I know that's who he is, but he just needs to cut that. He just needs to figure it out. He needs to find that medium. He just cannot just tilt out of control. Um, and then I think, yeah, the rest of the pitching staff is, if anything, they I want more breaks from them. We didn't mention this. Uh, Ryan Weathers got sent down to AAA. Um, what is being known, perceived as a... Um, um, as kind of like a, a load management thing because he's still so young. We forget how young he is all the time. But like they want, they want, they said they want him September, October. Yeah, they want a very dominant left hander in September, October. They also don't want to push him over 100 innings this yep, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is going to be, he's going to throw bullpen sessions basically in AAA because he has elite stuff. <clears throat> um, I just, Again, I, I'm not worried about weathers. I, here's a thought. Yeah. I'll, but let me t- t- I'll, I'll actually finally. I th- I'm very positive it will turn it around, but I'm not super positive that it'll be as good as turnaround as we think it is because without, without making drastic changes to the lineup, I don't think that you have production, um, that high of production with a combination of Hosmer and one of our catchers. I've I've spoken last episode. I think if we're that if that's the way we're looking at it, and even Profar, Profar is not Profar is a great utility guy. Can go anywhere, but he's not an offensive powerhouse. And I said if that's the way we're looking at it, then we might as well have Kim start more because Kim, you know, Kim had good at bats in Colorado, you know, and I think he's he has a higher ceiling than what we know currently what Hosmer's potential is. And Hosmer, Hosmer's attitude is. As he is right now, yeah. yeah. Hosmer right That's now is probably our biggest, like, you got to turn it around, buddy. This this is, you are, and you, you've got, last year was your best season you've had as a Padre total. You got to turn around. You've got to be the leader that we tra- signed you for, and you've got to become the hitter we know you can be. That's the yep. frustrating thing. Is yep. He can be. He's the one. I think if we get him to turn around, we've fixed a lot of problems. Obviously, the last two spots in our lineup have always been iffy. 
I just, I, um, yeah, that's why I think I do. I want to, um, I, again, nothing, we're not contradicting each other with our thoughts. No, we're not. We're just I, adding to each other. I, I just, I think, I think the only thing I'm different in, I don't think that our current construction that we go to far to the playoffs, or if, if even get the playoffs. Yes. And AJ probably can prove me wrong. He could trade for Robbie Grossman and Joey Gallo, and I'm just be like, great. I'm just sitting here enjoying that, you know. Uh huh. I I um. Like I said, this is what this is my thought. I want to say, I think they might be grooming Ryan Weathers to be a closer. Uh, we've talked about this before that he does fit the mold of what a classic closer would be, pre 1990 closer, which is just a three inning like shutdown guy. Yes. And which is plays very well in the playoffs. It does. <laughs> it does. It plays extremely well in the playoffs. You want that, you're right. Um I don't like I don't dislike the idea. I think he has the moxie for it. Um yeah, I don't like that. Dislike the idea at all. Um but yeah. It's been a Donner episode. But uh what do you think we're gonna do next week, Joe? Cause we're at home now, James. Next seven games will be, as is tradition around these parts, we decide, we predict, you know, sometimes with success, a lot of times not. Um, what the, um, what the actual, uh, what's it called? I can't think right now. Don't we have an what, off day the next record, Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. So we decide, basically, we decide beforehand, we tend to do the next two series. So we are facing Cincinnati Reds on uh, tonight. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then we welcome the dreaded enemies of the North, the Los Angeles Dodgers, for a three-game set on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, James. Um, what is your thinking about this? What are your thoughts? Do you think that we'll do well? Yeah, what, I guess, what, what do you think about the next coming up set of games? Five and two. Five and two. Are you thinking... Uh, we lose one of the Reds and one of the Dodgers. I like I like your vibe a lot. I really do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, here, I'm here with you. One, two. Okay. So um, I should... We're facing Wade Miley. That's right. And Joe Musgrove pitches tonight. Let me grab my phone so I can look at other pitching lineups. Um, Wade Miley, who threw a no-hitter this year. Joe Musgrove also threw a no I know. So it's a battle no of no-hitters. Hitter off. Yeah. No-hitter off. Um, let me see here. So tonight, start as we know about is tonight's Miley Musgrove. Um, and then Reds and I will on tomorrow we'll have Centillon and uh Centillion or Centillon, I can't remember. And Chris Paddock on Saturday on Friday. On Saturday it'll be um Gutierrez versus Lamette, and then Sunday it will be Luis Castillo, former Padre Great, which is you Darvish. And then presumably our our uh, our rotation, you know, will reset, so it'll be Snell, Musgrove, and uh, uh, Paddock for yeah. them. I think two starts, both um, Musgrove wins both of his starts in San Diego. Okay. Darvish bounces back on Sunday. Um, we might lose the Paddock start, not because the Paddock's going to pitch poorly. It's just the Reds do have a pretty good offense. I would like to see us sweep the Reds. Uh, but I know I I I think we're gonna lose at least one of the Dodgers because their pitching staff is pretty good. I mean we we can smack them around just because you know they're the Dodgers. And uh, no, I say five and two. And if you say otherwise, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I'm just gonna say I, I <laughs> you're a bad person. You're a bad person if you say otherwise. You sing five and two, and I like your. I like your dedication to that. Um, I have. Uh, I think that. I think we take three from the Reds. I like that. It's just tough, man. It's just really tough because if I, it's tough thinking that a lineup I saw this week is going to turn it around. Because like, if I'm a gambler, if we're going to turn around, if I'm a gambler, I'm season. saying three and four. And you can't. James, you can't see this, our loyal listeners, but James is noticeably upset by those, those comments. 
<laughs> but I believe I, I'm, I'm part of the friar faithful, not the friar unfaithful, James. I don't know. That's pretty unfaithful talk right there. <laughs> yeah. What's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing, expecting a different result. <laughs> if the Padres are going to turn around at any point, it's going to be in reopening day. I think it's four and three. Okay. I thought you said three and four a second ago. I said if I'm a gambler, that's what I'm doing. But I'm part of the prior fire faithful, so I give Potter an extra win. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think that we do very well against the Reds. Um, I think that um, we've done, if you're not the Chicago Cubs, we've done pretty well against NL Central teams. And part of the reason why we didn't do well against the Cubs, you know, offense didn't, which is a funk coming off those like four extra inning games in a row. Yeah. Um, I think that I think the Dodgers are, are a real threat, um, but they're they're also scuffling too. They're not doing super well. Um, they just got shut out um, by the Phillies yesterday. So I don't I don't think they're as big as like I thought. I think the Potters and Dodgers were better teams in April than they are now. Oh, I agree. We're both struggling, and I think it's because of, I mean, and we it wouldn't be a podcast of ours without we mentioned this. But on Monday. Um, the full lockdown happens where no sticky substances are to be allowed. So we might see a hip parade or just a hit by pitch parade. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so um, we might see the Padres offense break out in the Dodgers because, you know, we know how to draw walks, you know. Because all they're complaining about the Astros cheating them turns out they were nothing but dirty, dirty cheaters themselves. Um, but here's what I want. This is what I actually want. I, I want I tweet about this the other day that negative pods will continue until morale improves. I want morale to improve. Yes, this has been a negative this has been a real downer podcast. Uh, definitely if, no one listened to this point. No, People are just people have turned off. And if you have listened, please comment. Yeah. Say please. we listened to this point. Yeah. And so yes, that's what you think. I stay faithful and also if you're still listening to us. Please listen to our next, our Tuesday episode ne- next week. We're going to, um, you know, debut our new rule. That's what we talked about last I time. know, but we're going to, we're going to have, we have all everything hammered out. We're going to have everything. Oh, we are? Yeah, of course. Oh, my bad. Oh, a lot of that didn't schedule. <laughs> <laughs> We've had two conversations about this already. You don't act like this is a new thought. Oh, I, if, I, if I'm not looking at my calendar, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's been a downer episode. Sorry, we'll be do we'll do better next week. But hang on, we gotta we gotta end on a high note. We have an update. The Marvel baseball team. Don't okay, we? didn't you, you? You had an update for it. Oh yeah, because we the, a couple weeks ago we who would be the best Marvel players, the best team for um for all the Marvel players who would be a starting lineup, and I would I would replace Iron Man as a pitcher with Spider Man. Why is that, James? Sticky substance. Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. You know, you're probably listening to that, us on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on all the podcasts. Find us wherever you want. Hit the notification bell and the like button. You know, and things are going to be better, right? Because that's the Padres way. Even when we're bad, things get better because it's a beautiful day. There's and beautiful warm weather. Tweet us a happy face. Go, 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 to, go to the ballpark. Get a nice $15 beer, you know? Spend seventeen dollars on on a badly made hot dog. You know, have some fun in the sun, dude. I'm gonna push back on you right what, there, what? because if you're eating seventeen dollars and and getting a bad hot dog, you're getting a hot dog at the wrong place. You gotta go to Gagley Only Brothers and Gag- Randy Jones Barbecue makes phenomenal hot dogs. You know, so no, 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 hot no, dogs aren't that expensive at Petco Park. They're I, not that at all. But inflation is bad, though. Inflation <laughs> is a thing. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't spend too much money on a hot dog. <laughs> I think that's words we could all live by. Well, end of the downer pod, but end it with a deep pod. And until next time, go Padres. Go Padres. <laughs> and there it is. Ho-ho, doctor. You can hang a star on that, baby.